Something's going to happen. Something wonderful. G'day fans and welcome to another exciting episode of the show. Three people have joined in the space of the time it took Jeffro to do this. <laughs> Absolutely impressive. Good old Ange has joined us already. Absolutely magnificent. As has Michelle. People are rolling in like oranges. Six people already. I can't believe it. It's a Wednesday night. It's wet. You don't have a curfew anymore. You can go out and about, kitties, within your five-kilometer radius. But instead, you've decided to stick it here with us. How good is that? Now, before I get uh, too excited, and yeah, as you can see, I am excited, I've got to introduce my lads. So, lads, how are we tonight? Uh, most excellent. So, uh, I'm enjoying a change of scenery from where I usually sort of have to film. So, I'm back in the uh, the Jeffro room. So, hopefully, the internet will hold out. Looking forward to uh, seeing how it all goes. Very good. And and I'm a little bit chafed. I'm a little bit chafed because the elastic that's attached to me that only lets me go 5Ks has been strung a little too tightly so um that's why i'm here tonight um get yourself a coffee because i'm sure that's one of the edible things that we're going to be talking about and it should be very very cool so uh there we go so over to you mps the pressure's on you son make it happen no no pressure at all um all righty so we're talking about things that we ate in ye olde days now i'm talking about pop cultural type items not um you know, I had a hamburger in 1927, you know, it just came out yesterday sort of thing. So we're talking about all the pop culture and food items. There's a couple that aren't, and I'll explain why, but why they are at the same time. So uh, are you gentlemen ready? Here we go. Uh, some things we'll not be talking about, as I mentioned, because they're not pop cultural. Uh, we won't be nibbling Nobby's nuts. We won't be sucking on a fisherman's friend. Uh, and that's not how you eat porridge. Uh, and peanut butter all the way to the bottom of the jar. Uh, which means he says he doesn't know. Uh, our two all beef patty special sauce, lettuce, cheese, pickles, onions on the sesame seed bun. And where's the cheese? Or, you know, someone mm. created the cheese, one of the two. So we won't be talking about any of those things in this presentation. However, there are some things later on that you we can't actually eat. And there are different various items, and this is all the cold stuff that I could find that we ate back in the day. Rocket ice creams. Now, these are icy poles. Uh, the green, the red, and the white one was the first version, and then the more colourful one came later on. I remember having the more colourful version back in the day. Now, just a precursor, those who were born or, or remember things from 1990 upwards, you're not going to remember any of this stuff because it's mostly 80s. Mostly 80s, some 70s. So um, this will all be very new to you. But the, for the rest of us, there'll be glimpses of, holy crap, I forgot all about that. Uh, sunny boys. You had one option at school when I was at school, and that was if you wanted to cool down in summer, it was a sunny boy. It was orange and mango, and that's it. Apparently in the 90s and 2000s, you got flavoured sunny boys. Um, you had red, green, and, and whatever else. But uh, back in the day, it was just orange and mango. I'll correct you on that one. Oh, there was right. the uh, all the flavoured glugs, if you uh, happen to remember the uh, 70s. No. It was called glugs. <laughs> all right. Well, I, I went to school from 1979 onwards, so and I only remember Sunny Boys. We'll have to do a uh, Google search. Star Wars. Hey? We'll have to do a Google search on that one. <laughs> Star Wars Return of the Jedi ice creams. Now, these were very, very cool. They were solid um blue ice down the bottom they were red and i believe with chocolate uh, underneath it on top and blue ice gel which was awesome i loved that back then in the day you guys should remember this one oh absolutely yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah i remember the empire yeah. strikes back ones well i got something for you jeffro so there was the icy poles that came out a couple of years earlier that was just the plain flavored icy poles i remember having a lot of lemonade ones back in the day uh, they were a fraction older, these ones. These were Paul's Icy Poles. And the Empire Strikes Back. There you go. Mm. Yeah, Lime, the ones black, are raspberry, them. and red. And you know what? I never had one of those because I never liked raspberry. So it, back in the day, I missed out on eating them, but I still remember seeing them around. 
Now, Here Man had an icy pole, and this was very, very cool because it wasn't just a plain icy pole. These were shaped in the shape of He-Man and Skeletor. Now, they were a little bit older. I think it was 86 because it's a Thunder Punch He-Man and a different Skeletor to his normal costume. And the funny thing is I inquired as to, to Streets Ice Cream recently to find out if they still had the molds for this, and they have nothing, no advertising, no marketing for it, and they got rid of the molds. So... One thing about Skeletor being the bad guy, you know, as an icy pole, he took a licking, but he kept on ticking. <laughs> <laughs> and the funny thing is, I actually preferred the red one, which was He-Man, because the purple one was a uh, grape flavor, and I didn't like grape but that, back in the day. So um, you only have one Skeletor, and that's all you need to remember. Now, these created crazy critters. Now, this was a bit of a ripoff, because Streets and Peters were obviously competitors in the day, and these were just, just the shape of the icy poles. That's what it was. And they were all just different flavors, but created um, to look like critters. So you've got the daredevil in the back, you've got the koala berry in the red, and the platypus one in the blue, white, whatever you want to do. You guys would remember Flash Gordon ice creams, wouldn't you? No. 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 Okay. They were around. Um, I think they were mostly family packs. I remember having one that was crunchy like... Um, not like hundreds and thousands, but what the other ones, millions and trillions, whatever they're called, the flaky <laughs> bits there on top. Um, and essentially they were not around for very long, but they weren't too bad. Flat, Rainbow uh, sprinkles. They were. they were. Sorry? Rainbow sprinkles. Rainbow sprinkles, that's it. Um, and the Buck Rogers one, remember this one? I don't know. Vaguely. No? Okay, well, these were around. I remember seeing them. Um, and the competition was to win... Um, back in the day, thirty-two thousand dollars worth of prizes. How's that for for big time competitions? But you could win mostly action figures from that. Uh, Jeffro, your turtle one, which I don't remember, but you do. Yeah, I mean, I was a big uh, turtles fan. So, and the other thing too is I love collecting um, uh, anything to do with uh, food and and things because. Particularly the wrappers, you know, you could wash them out and put them in with the newspaper clippings, and it was just purely by accident that uh, I was going through my, um, my my clippings, and I found this one and I posted it online. So I can't remember what it tasted like, but uh, yeah, it's it, uh, obviously anything to do with turtles I uh, collected or tried to. Remember, forgiveness like is divine, but never pay full price for a late ice cream. <laughs> Uh, the Kiss ice creams, they were around, and I don't remember actually seeing one. I remember seeing the advertising for it back in the day, and I couldn't justify eating the black on top. I wasn't a Kiss fan, so I didn't eat any of these, but they were around back in the day. Uh, if you have a look at the packaging, they've been autographed, and I think that's actually the printing on the paper. Uh, and Garfield, for all those cat-loving fans, Garfield was... This, this was sort of in the area of... Um, the Bubble Bill type ice creams, they were the face or the, the character looking type ice creams. Uh, cool Shark. Cool Shark was very, very cool because it was blue, a little bit of white at the top. And I think they sort of wanted to base it on Jaws a little bit, even though it was a lot later, back in the later 80s. But it was a very lemonade cool type of um, icy pole. And the fact it was a shark was even better, you know. The Smurfy, I love this. This was the best mm. ice cream in the world because you had the white, which was ice cream, and the blue, which was icy pole. And you could pull the two apart, and you could have one first and then the other one. Or you could have a bit of each at the same time. That was spectacular. And look the at the price. The with having those is that as you got further down the two sticks, they would eventually break apart anyway. You're trying to see how far can you get to the bottom before they lost their structural integrity, so to speak. Yeah. So, yeah. And they made choc, choc, wedge, uh, choc not yeah. choc wedges, but something like that were, were similar yeah. later on. Um, but how's that? 18 cents for the for an icy pole back then. You know, imagine going into a shop now, if you can find a, a, a corner milk bar and saying, I want an 18 cent icy pole. Thank you very much. I, I still remember when ice cream first hit a dollar. It was the it was the choc burger or the ice cream burger or whatever. It was the first time when it hit a dollar. And it was like, oh, my God, that is obscene. Now, of course, it's nothing. But, um, yeah. yeah. 18 cents. Yeah. Alf, which came a little bit later, I think it was about 88, 89, the Alf ice cream came out. And Agro's Mega Munch. Now, I don't recall seeing this as regular in, mm. in, in Melbourne. It might have been a Queensland thing. But if you have a look at the fact it had a bubblegum nose, that was taken from the Bubble O Bill. 
Now, Bubble Eye Bill was a streets product because my mother used to work for streets ice cream back in the day. It was one of her sort of um, um, jobs. And she brought home a whole box of bubble gums. And I tell you what, I couldn't get rid of the damn things. I eventually started using them as slingshot projectiles because <laughs> there were too many of the damn things to eat. To, to eat. Uh, here's a couple of things. Um, I like this from Daniel. Was a Garfield one lasagna flavoured? Yeah, very good. I like that one. Yeah. Very, very cool. And um, 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 Jeffro, is this true? It's Tom Baker's Street Side Ice Cream. Does that ring any bells for you? There was um, uh, Doctor Who ones, but uh, I don't know whether that was Australian, but it was definitely the UK. Yep. Okay. Now, this was a, a slightly older one. Um, oh, 90... recognise that photo. <laughs> I know, and you'll recognise a few more because the only reference for some of these is actually on Daggy's website, and that's the really scary part. Um, so, yeah, this was a about a 97 release. I never saw them. Dude, you want to tell us about it? Yeah, so um, so it's from 95 and 97 from Batman Forever and Batman and Robin, and um, they obviously came out as they did at the time, and uh, I did it. It's a bit of a long story as to why I did this, but I ended up buying uh, about four of each, I think it is, and I put them in my freezer, and they're still there. So one of them is now 25 years old, and the other one is 23 years old. So uh, and they're still in the freezer. They've lost their shape a little bit, but otherwise they're still in, in, uh, incomplete. So there you go. And we'll be seeing more Batman stuff later on. Now, there's hot stuff, and not a lot of it uh, mm. that I could reference. But the one hot stuff was a Chico roll. And it, I'm not putting this up for the fact that it was a Chico roll, because I've never had one. And I didn't put it up specifically because of political correctness. But the advertising for Chico Roll, which was always the girl on the motorbike. And until yep. about 10 years ago, uh, unless you go to a very old fashioned, maybe country fish and ship shop, you may still see them. But as far as I'm aware, most of them are not around anymore. Do you remember? I think it was in the TV commercial where a dude, I think it's a dude or woman, I don't know who it is, has got the bag and they go smack at the bottom and the thing just pops out the top. Oh, so unbelievably suggestive and phallic. It's <laughs> not funny. Yeah. Uh, yes. Yeah. But I've never had one. Don't know what it tastes like. And as far as I'm aware, the advertising didn't work on me, even though it was destined for males at that stage, I yeah. would imagine. Yes. Uh, now, brown stuff. Doesn't sound as bad as it, as it looks, but it might be. Now, back in the day, He-Man uh, chocolate was brought out. And what you had was a whole stack of... Um, uh, chocolate wrappers that had all the characters on them. So you had black ones, uh, which had the villains, and the red ones, which had the good guys. Uh, and it was just a plain bit of chocolate. There was nothing spectacular about the chocolate or anything like that. But they did come, if you have a look in the bottom right-hand corner, with a temporary tattoo. So you could have your favourite character plastered on your arm and go from there. There weren't too many other products that I could find that were chocolate, uh, except for this. And... <laughs> Dax should know a bit about this one. Do you want to tell us about this one, dude? Yeah, there's a funny story behind this. So this is from Batman Returns in 1992. Uh, and they came out. And, of course, at that time, the chocolate was pristine and whatever else. I bought one and Jeffro bought one. Uh, and then, of course, chocolate, as it does, turns white over a period of time. And then one day, uh, Jeffro rang me up and he said his had just crumbled, right? So it actually just lost its structural integrity and just crumbled. So I quickly put mine in the fridge and... Uh, it's 28 years later, and it's still there. It's in the butter drawer uh, in the refrigerator. So, and, and as you see, it there is exactly as it looks today. Uh, and I'm just glad it had a clear window so you could have, it, have a look at it. And but when I spoke to Jeffro at the time after his had just crumbled, I said to him, "Well, what did you do with it, dude?" And he said, well, "I ate it." And I said, "Well, I think this is a wheel." <laughs> <laughs> so uh, yeah, so it's still in the butter drawer after uh, 28 years. Uh, actually, yeah, it is 28 years. Yep, exactly right. And I ate mine as soon as I got it because I thought, well, I can't waste the chocolate. So how funny is that? We all had one. Yep. Uh, wet stuff. I'm talking about liquid, not, not, not that wet stuff. Um, another He-Man product they had was Break Drink. Uh, it was a fruit drink. It was like a Prima. And what they did is they chucked stickers on the back of the boxes. And you had a look at the stickers and you could. And believe it or not, this is the best reference photo I could find because there are none anywhere uh you got a poster and you you stuck the stickers on and made your action battle scene sort of thing um these disappeared and i've only seen one other better version of this picture but a long time ago uh, other than that very hard to find these pictures um, yes 
I love this one from Aaron. Look at that. He used to have He-Man rap. He used to get the tattoos and stick them on his brother's forehead. I <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh, love it. That's great. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Um, now, I can't find any reference to break fruit juice anywhere in my, in my search for this sort of stuff, so I can't tell you. I think it was about 84 to about 86 when these came out. I had a few, but I never got the whole set. Uh, this poster apparently on eBay is going for about 400 bucks. So crazy, crazy stuff. Uh, Batman Cola came out in two different years and two different styles. And uh, I don't know if Jeffro had them. I had a can. Dags, mm-hmm. These are Dags picture, I think. Uh, I, think uh, no, photo, I don't have the bottom photo because I don't have that uh, logo, but I've got both oh, okay. the can and the bottle uh, still unopened. And I didn't realize it until after I don't know, a year or two years or whatever. I thought I didn't even think to get a slab because I didn't know if a slab of the cans actually had the Batman logo on the cardboard or on the packaging. And I would have been absolutely fantastic. I just didn't even register at the time. So now I've only got one can and one bottle. So, yeah. yeah. I had a bottle. I had a can. The cola was terrible. Um, it was not like your Coke or anything like that. And I think Coke then brought out the next lot for Batman Returns, which are the red cans. Well, actually, with the bottle, I bought it at a collector's fair for $10, right? And you think about it, who on earth ever pays 10 bucks for a bottle of Coke? And this is like back in the 90s. So yeah, it's probably about worth about $14 these days. I mean, your brain just was, uh, you'd never pay that in a million years, and I couldn't pay for uh, get my money out quick enough. So there you go. Actually, I'll, mm. I'll tell you a story. Uh, one of the things I bought in terms of a slab is a slab of Ghostbusters uh, soft drink cans. So really brilliant and all that kind of stuff. The only interesting thing is that the cans are actually, uh, that's the ones. There's no actual drink in them. They're actually oh. empty. And the, oh. the idea is it may contain a ghost. And, of course, ghosts <laughs> don't weigh anything, so they did need to put a drink in it. Jeez, how's that? Very good. Oh, yeah. They were the they were the they were the Ghostbusters ones. I thought you'd know about those, Jeffro. So there you go. Um, mm. I've I'm still got the slab somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> See, I never thought to buy a slab of those either. I'd bought mine at a at a milk bar. It cost me fifty cents, which I think was ridiculous back in the day. No, it was two dollars. It was ridiculous back in the day for a can of drinks. So, but um, I don't know. I don't remember the Batman Returns soft drink. Was that released in this country? Yeah, I saw a few of them, but they came and went pretty quick. Like, oh, I never even got one. So, oh. yeah, I know. I know. Um, now, some of those of us who will remember these, these are all the tops of, of Coke and, and all sorts of cans. Now, I'm going to make a suggestion. Anyone who's under 40 will remember uh, the current ones that we have now, the, those ring pulls. You may very well remember the original ring pulls. When you pull yep. the, the whole lot off. Now, the new ones are for safety, so you can pop and push it back. The original ones where you could just rip it all off. And do you remember the hardest ones around, which were the solo yep. cans, mostly for memory? The two yep. holes, which were almost mm-hmm. impossible to get that second hole done. Yep. You know? And you cut yourself pretty much every time you did it. So, um, yeah, dangerous, dangerous stuff. Now, the funny thing is, this is a large scale picture. The, the other picture, which I should have put up there to scale, is there's a guy that's about, oh, Stands about up to about here. So someone's made a really big one of these just to emphasize the point. <laughs> wow. But they're all the ring pulls that we've had over the years. And like I said, there's only three that I recall. And those are the deadly, dangerous ones that you would, mm-hmm. uh, um, if you didn't get it off, that was it. It curled up and you had to try and drink your can or stick a straw in or something like that. It was always dangerous to have those ones. So Aaron had a Simpsons clear cola somewhere. So there you go. Remember that one, Jeffro? I do, I do, now that uh, he mentions it. Yeah, I do remember it. And also, um, I know that for a fact you've got at least the poster, haven't you, Jeffro, the Duff one? I actually didn't get any of the Duff ones. Uh, I know that price has really skyrocketed on those because it was an Australian-only release, and mm. then there was an issue with uh, Fox saying, hang on, we didn't really sort of authorise that, so they had to take them off the shelves quick smart. Yep. Well, I've seen some Duff beer cans in recent times i'm going to say this year and i'm going to say there's a shop in southland that has them it's like an american type sweet store and it has a couple of duff cans i don't know if it's beer but it's certainly a duff can mm. of sorts they did eventually relicense it and uh, but i don't think it's beer okay. uh until probably the last 10 or 15 years remember these coke would bring out the santa 
cans at Christmas time. And that was because I believe uh, Coke was the, the creator of the Jolly Red suit um, mm. and the yeah. idea of Father Christmas. So back before they did this, which was, I don't know, 19 early 1900s i would imagine um these were those things that around about november you'd start seeing coke cans come out with christmas emblems and out and themes and they were very very cool to look at yeah i think it was about the 1930s actually when they took the idea of saint nicholas and turned him into the the santa claus that we recognize today so yeah a lot of yeah. people didn't know that actually the red and white is a representation of red and white of coca-cola so there you go these are Japanese and they're 1999 to about 2005 release. They're bottle, co bottle top um, that you can put on your Coke bottle or your Pepsi bottle because they're blue. Um, and they came out in Star Wars. They came out episode one. Uh, I've got a couple of the bottom Royal Guard heads uh, and I looked around for the Senate Guard ones the other day and there's only a couple of those floating around and they're in packs. So, um, but they're around and they were kind of cool. Um, some people are chucking them out. Some people are trying to ask for big money like Tarzos. So that was for Pepsi and their Japanese release, as I mentioned. Now I had one of these, it wasn't this color. And I remember drinking these when I was a kid, they were Fred Flintstone like, and they had cordial in them. So you'd cut the top off and it was a straw and you'd be able to drink, you know, orange or green out of Fred Flintstone. I also remember they had hand grenades as well. I don't know why. <laughs> Yeah, uh, you would get, get a hand grenade, but there was hand grenades, uh, and yeah. I think there might have been Barney Rubbles as well. But this is the only reference photo I could find of the Fled Flintstone one. <laughs> now, Daggy knows about this wet stuff. It's his photo. <laughs> yeah. So there was two flavors of Batman cordial that came out. You got raspberry and lime, um, and uh, I mean, all things being equal, it was just cheap ass cordial and uh although in these bottles are actually empty i found that because of the weight of cordial it was just too heavy so i actually uh, i think i bought the lime one empty anyways but the raspberry one i did actually drink so um but yeah the cool thing with being in a black bottle uh with a sticker on it it was actually all kind of groovy but i don't know if they're released anywhere else in the world but uh but yeah there was only the two flavors that i'm aware of so but yeah raspberry yeah. And lime. i had the raspberry one and yeah got rid of the fluid inside of it it was too much all right chewy stuff stuff that we ate now we didn't get any of these sort of cereals back in the day these are all american releases um and i don't recall ever seeing any of those over here um we all had the plain ones and i i remember an aussie ostrich um cereal but that was probably late 80s but there's no reference that i can find to it and no one else knows what i'm talking about so i will move on from the cereals um, I've actually got the Batman one. Uh, I did buy that in America. It's one of the few things I did actually get when I was over there. And it was interesting because the actual flakes are shaped as Batman thingies, right? Which was kind of groovy. And on the other side of the pack, because it's this uh, shrink wrap, is like a like a money box type thing. I don't yeah. know why they included it, but uh, but the actual packet and the things look grouse. So, but yeah, right, they weren't released over here. We did have chewy things and they were released. This is a range of bubble gums. Uh, Aaron's probably more the expert on this one here, uh, but there's a range of bubble gums. I remember the Return of the Jedi ones. I remember some of the Superman ones. Um, don't remember the He-Man ones, but the other thing I remember is all the football ones because I used to collect football cards back in the day. Uh, but yeah, these were all, all over here. Um, so yeah, uh, whichever ones else came out. So. Um, Aaron saying that Star Wars ones came out. So yeah, came that's, that's, yeah. that's there. Uh, again, I don't remember them. I remember the Jedi ones, maybe the Empire. Um, but yeah, there's a whole stack of those. And obviously, what was it? Five or six cards and a piece of chewing gum. You know, Bubble gum. Yep. And of course, gum. if you open up a whole lot of packets at exactly the same time, you'd always have to try and do the thing of eat the bubble gum all at the same time. So you'd end up chewing this huge, your jaw would really ache because this thing is just <laughs> massive in your mouth. But the smell was always really, really nice. Your cards used to smell awesome. So yeah. Yeah. And magic gum, magic gum was one of these things. It was particles and what they put in there was something else that made a pop in your mouth. So if you closed your mouth and just let it pop and listen very carefully, you'd have this little popping sensation going on. Uh, it's called something else nowadays. I can't remember what it's called, but magic gum was what it was called back in the day. Now these were very cool too. I had a few of these. Um, they were Star Wars heads for Return of the Jedi. I don't think they made them for any other film. Uh, and they had little um, lollies in them. Uh, so you pop the bottom off, eat the lollies and keep the heads. Uh, there was also Batman ones. I got some of these. I'm sure you've got a couple of these, dude. 
Yeah, um, I think I have a full box of those. Actually, just the Batman, not the Joker uh, one. So, uh, yes, it's all sealed and uh, looking pretty gritty. Because you also had the, um, with the the character, you got the bust of Batman, and there's also a version that's just the head as well. So, but uh, yes, I've got yeah. a box of those. Yeah, I've got the Batman bust, the Batmobile, and the Joker head. So, um, hey, hey, dude, did you realize this? This is from Aaron. So, there you go. Bubblegum cards apparently rarer than US ones. Hmm, fancy that. Oh, okay. Yes, yeah, it's, it's like. Um, uh, anything to do with toll toys on Star Wars is a lot rarer. Um, just with the bubblegum ones, it was made by a company called Scanlons. So mm -hmm. by the very fact that it's not tops means that uh, it's it's got that, uh, that extra value to it. Cool. Uh, these are some more which I'd never seen before. I don't think they're made over here, but I just thought I'd throw this in. You know, who wants a Howard the Duck lolly, lolly holder sort of thing? Or a um, Harry from the Hendersons film. Um, there you go. There's a reference, Harry and the Hendersons. Um, mm. <laughs> and the slime. I wonder if the slimer ones are actually slimy or you can mm. put your own slime in there. Anyway, we'll move along. Now, it wasn't the fact that he ate what he brought. It was the fact he was a gobble doc and the fact that he came back to Earth and all he wanted was potato chips. Um, I got the feeling this was a bit of an elf rip-off, rip but eventually the gobble doc was kind of cool. Hang on. So who's going to be the first person who writes up in the comments, chippy, chippy, chippy? <laughs> <laughs> now, these aren't exactly what I was looking for, but they were close enough. They were, these are called Space Raiders. Now, what I was looking for was I remember back in the day there was a Space Invaders type um, chip, and it was in this sort of style. It was puffed up and all that sort of stuff, and it looked like a little disc and a bit to it that looked like a UFO. Um, and this was the best picture I could find of it. So... Uh, close enough to what we're looking for. Hey, have you seen this? Oh. The elf candy was shaped like little cats. <laughs> Did you know, you know that, Jeffro? No, no, I didn't know that. That, that's, that is funny. <laughs> that's very cool. Um, Pac-Man was the same sort of thing. It was the same sort of style. It was fl it was inflatable little chips, and it was Pac-Man and the four ghosts, Inky, Blinky, Pinky, and Clyde. So very fun to eat. Now, this has a reference for the fact that it's sugar on sugar. Back in the day when you could eat sugar and nothing occurred, you know, you can dip the stick, lick the stick, and I'll leave that rest to your imagination. Uh, I'm, they're also Batman I'm, I'm games. I'm sorry. I have, to get a, I have to get a little bit adult here. You've just talked about dip the stick, lick the stick, and then I've got – there's a comment from Natasha. Um, so let's just stop there because Natasha is expecting. So we'll, we'll leave it at that, shall we? So. <laughs> <laughs> um yeah. You get the joke. It's all good because Spanker's on the other on the other line, so it's all good yeah. fun. Anyway, let's move on. So these are Batman chewable candies, and these are your photos, dude. So do tell. Yep. Yeah. So um, they produced for the '89 movie. Uh, go back to the previous one, mate. Um, these are like jelly snakes. Can you just, yeah, like jelly snakes, but they're the shape of Batman. Um, and uh, over a period of time, I mean, these are. 31, 30 years old then, I think it is, or is it 30 or 40 years old? Oh, I've lost track 31. Now. Um, 31, yeah, 30, sorry. They're 31 years old and I've got them in my fridge and they are as hard as an absolute rock. It's absolutely unbelievable. There's a whole story about Jeffro eating his about years after they went out of date. But yeah, I've got those in my refrigerator. And the next picture. And these are actually cream filled chocolates, which I also got. And for many, many years afterwards, when I opened the fridge, I could actually smell them. Um, uh, the actual flavour coming through, but now it's all long since gone. But these are also in my refrigerator as well after 31 years. So uh, I'll be curious to see if anybody anybody else in the world has these. So, uh, But, yeah, I was very happy to get them. It's funny because I've never seen either of them. I remember seeing pictures, but I've never seen them live. So uh, that was always very, very cool to see again. And Melody Pops, the only sort of lolly you could play with, and it was okay because you could blow the whistle, make a melody. And Chubba Chubbs, well, they're still around, but they don't look as good as this anymore because you've got them in tins and buckets and whatever the case is. But this was always very cool. It's always the one you wanted, and you had to struggle to pull it out on the threat that you might pull the whole lot down. So, And lovely Gobble Bliss Bombs. Now, these, if you remember these back in the day, they don't put them in boxes anymore if you can find them. Um, but the boxes went out of style back in the 90s, I believe, and that was the last time you could sort of find those. They were just... Um, uh oh coffee flavored um popcorn um if you're really desperate for them the reject shop has a very close version of the same thing 
Fast food stuff. Now, everything comes with fast food eventually. Now, these are not things to eat, but these are things to get with your fast food. Back in the day, these were Muppet Babies that went along with the TV show. Uh, you go along, get your Happy Meal, and get your Muppet Baby for, I think it was 85 cents. Because, guess what? I even found the commercial. I'm not going to play it because it's actually quite terrible to watch. But you can YouTube this, um, and it's actually very weird. Um to watch how they advertise these things back in the day. Now, the funny thing is, there's five of them. They only advertised four. So, go figure. Um, dude, I've got a question. I have to answer this one. Do I actually keep any current edible food in my fridge? I don't, but my other half does. And uh, believe me, she does get the shits. And from time to time, when she wants to put stuff in the freezer and the ice creams are still there, and it's like, bloody hell, bloody hell. And she can't use the butter tray in the fridge and the door because the Batmobile's there. But she's gotten used to it now. So, uh <laughs> Everything is a clickable. I'll give you the story. Uh, the, like with the ice creams, there was a guy who um, uh, clicked the Thunderbirds ice creams back in the 60s, right? And apparently he had them for years and years and years in his freezer. And he was always paranoid he was going to get a power outage and he was going to lose them all. So he sold them off. This is the rumor of the story. And he made thousands upon thousands of dollars. And I thought, well, why don't I just do the same thing as a bit of a joke, as a bit of a gag, right? I mean, there were two worst movies in the universe, Batman Forever and Batman and Robin, but whatever. And, uh, yeah, and I decided to do the same thing. So putting food in the fridge just to see how long it'll last and to see if there's any interest in it decades later, you know, if they appreciate the value. So there you go. That's the reason behind it all. Sorry, MPS, go for it, mate. It's all right. <clears throat> Snoopies. There were lots of Snoopies. Snoopies from McDonald's. Now, I'll, I'll get to a point shortly, but McDonald's did have a lot of products coming out, and they still do. You could pretty much pick up a new toy every week um, for years with McDonald's. Then there was the Batman range back in 93. I've got some of the figures at the top. I didn't get any of the figures below because I thought they looked rubbish. Uh, did you get any of these? Uh, I don't remember. I don't remember them at all, actually. So uh, I would, if, if I had one, it would only be the Batman one, but I don't recall them at all. So the answer is uh, no. There you go. Yeah. Uh, and the Batman cups or glasses, mm. which had a huge debacle back in the day. These were designed on Batman and Robin and... Sorry, Batman Forever, uh, yeah. and they were French made, but because the French were dropping bombs on a paradis, uh, everyone decided to boycott these, which means you had a billion of these things. And I still have, I think, two or three sets sitting around here somewhere. I actually used one of my Batman ones because I figured, what's the point in putting it away when I could just use it eventually? And at the same time, in 92, they released Batman pens. Now I had a range of these, and I think I had two sets eventually, um, one in packet and one out of packet. Uh, the weird thing about this, the fact that, A, well, Catwoman's sitting on a wall, which makes it look like she shit a brick, um, and the fact that the orange pen comes out of the Batmobile, I don't know, that was a weird colour. Uh, I don't know why they chose orange mm. for that. I actually, for both the glasses and the pens, got the full sets of both just because it just seemed what the right thing to do at the time. So, yeah. Yeah. Mm. Uh, McDonald's also released X-Men, so they were DC and Marvel at the time. They released Lego. Now, this was weird because I'm not sure if these are the exact sets from the day, but I remember getting Lego from McDonald's, and they were very small sort of sets, and these are quite small sort of sets, but it was very cool to go to McDonald's, get your meal, and get a Lego set. Now, this is... A the only photo I could reference, and it wasn't until I saw it that I remembered that this occurred. These were McDonald's spaceships that they would put your meal in and give them to you. Now, they also had stickers, and you could put the stickers on how you wanted to on the outside of the ship. I don't know if you got – you guys probably won't remember this. You guys are both older than me, so it might not have occurred to you back, back then. But I think it was probably about the 84 to 85 era that these, um, that these came out. Interesting comment from uh, Carol about your mill markets out in Ballarat. Uh, you might still find some of these things floating around there for sale. So, uh, yeah, she's seen them before, which is kind of groovy. So keep your eyes open, everybody. Yeah. So I love these things. I thought they were very cool back in the day. Don't have them anymore, but what can you do? Now, Pizza Hut. Pizza Hut only gave the occasional sort of um, uh, toy out. Now, these were from Land Before Time. And the fun thing about this, apparently, if you take one of these and stick it in the microwave and put it on for a minute, you can watch it melt. Because <laughs> that's what people were doing in the 90s. Uh, Pizza Hut also brought out here the Ninja Turtles range. Now, what's interesting about this is the fact that Pizza Hut had these out here, but in the States it was Burger King. So if you have a look at the top 
right hand corner, Burger King actually released these. So I don't know if Pizza Hut and Burger King were owned by the same company back in the day or if it was some sort of deal, but it seemed to be very different. Uh, now remembering Burger King did open up as Burger King here for a little while, then it turned to Hungry Jacks because everyone thought we're not going to an American franchised um, institution, but we eat everywhere else because everywhere else is essentially Americanized. Say, so, dude. Um, so yeah. apparently, according to um, Aaron, yeah, their McDonald's spaceships are quite rare, um, especially if you want to use them as a frisbee. <laughs> there you go. How about that? Very, very cool. Uh, Pizza Hut also re reopened the in the late 90s with um, Star Wars stuff. There were many, many cups and figures, the middle row of figures. There was an inch and a half or two inch figure and a cardboard sort of diorama behind it. Obviously, the bottom cups were episode one and the top cups... I, I don't recall. Were they in 97 for the yeah. extended version? Yeah, yeah okay. 97, yeah. It, it, it's kind of funny because uh, with the cups at the top, in Melbourne, for whatever reason, we just got the cups, right? But in all the other states, they actually got toppers that went on top of them, like you know, like sculpted toppers with the straw sticking out, but they never got released in Melbourne. I don't even know why. So people in Melbourne didn't even know that they existed until people from Sydney started bringing them down, down to sell. And people go, what the hell? what's the deal with that? And some of them look really good too, except with the placement of the straw is a bit weird but uh yeah so there is actually a topper that goes on top of the cup for the top row these also came out from pizza hut these were cute little aliens i had a couple of these and i remember they were probably about 85 86 because my sister was only a couple of years old when these came out now if you also remember pizza hut was very expensive to eat at it was you know i think 20 bucks a pizza back then which was quite expensive but these little creatures came out and they were very cool they're bendable so you can actually move their arms and their feet and do all sorts of weird things with them uh, and then we move on to KFC. KFC brought out a range of Star Wars stuff. This was one of those things where you squeeze Vader's head and it would spin around and open and you would see Anakin's face with just the mask underneath. Um, Scale-wise, it doesn't quite fit. It's a little bit uh, small compared to the helmet, um, but it's a very cool little design. And that came out with this range of, of products. So you had your little AT-AT, -AT, your your ATST, uh, the X-Wing and the TIE Fighter chasing each other. And I think... The Death Star did something else, but I can't remember what it did exactly. You know, I think you pushed the button and it opened up like an egg. Yeah, yeah. I couldn't remember what it actually did, but yeah. So they were all very cool. KFC also has these um, Looney Tunes and Lion King cups, and I went there for one cup and one cup only. I got my Wild E Coyote cup, and I was very happy, and I've had it ever since. Now, Hungry Jacks, I don't recall them bringing anything out. They may have, but I never got anything from Hungry Jacks. So, um, well, there you go. There's an answer for you. Star Trek Next Generation, pin chips and pin toppers and Simpsons glasses. So there you go. Okay. There you go. So I don't recall them, probably because I wasn't into, into the Simpsons or Next Gen at the time to want to buy products for them. Uh, and Wendy's. Now, here's a question for you. When was the last time you were in a Wendy's store? No idea. About then, about then. But let me tell you, I was in a Wendy's store about four years ago because back when I was, uh, about four years ago, I was over in the States and I went to New York and I happened to come across a Wendy store and I thought, you know what, I haven't been into one of these for, for decades. So I went in and it was exactly the same as what we had over here. You know, had all the same sort of food that you could have eaten at the time and uh, yeah, it was just a bit of nostalgia. Um, mind you, their drinks still sucked because uh, it was like 40 degrees outside and I needed something cool to drink and it was the closest place to get something from. But they were huge. So, you know, you win some, you lose some. Uh, and miscellaneous food stuff. Now, this was something that was pop cultural back in the day because apparently everyone's mum or grandmother, my grandmother had this book, but she never made me a cake in this fashion. Um, I always got cakes that looked like farms, um, but I never got one of these. So, you know, anyone who as a parent would probably remember their mum having this book. Not really old, these are very new, but I thought they were very cool. Jeffrey, you might like this because they're Ninja Turtles related. Someone's got some mm -hmm. Sprite bottles and put a little um, mask around them, put googly eyes and <laughs> they look awesome. Something something for you to do this weekend, Jeffrey, as a project. <laughs> oh yeah, um, I mean, just, just what I need as a 57 year old. <laughs> Now, here's one that I cannot find a reference to. I don't think I imagined it, but back in the, the early 80s to mid 80s, you used to get margarine containers. And what they would do was they were sort of, uh, I can't even explain, they were sort of cup 
type shapes and you would con they told you you could put the two of them together and expand on them and build a space station out of them. So if anyone can reference this for me, that would be great. I'd love to see a photo of these things. I cannot find one anywhere on the internet and I searched for a day and a half, the last day and a half for them. Uh, mind you, I've been looking for these things for years because I cannot find a reference photo anywhere, but they were margarine containers that you could make into a space station. Mind you, we never got any um, because we didn't eat that sort of margarine and you would have needed about 10 and bulk buying, and bulk buying didn't occur back, back in those days. And that's it. I'm full. Well done. So there's a round, round of applause for the old MPS. Excellent work, as always. Um, while he catches his breath, I just wanted to sort of bring up, um, we used to know uh, a dude, a friend of ours, um, called Phil, back in the early 2000s. I haven't seen him for a long time now. His specialty in terms of collecting was actually Star Wars food items, but not the food, but the packaging. And even he was way ahead of his time. So even back then, he would contact people from all around the world uh, and say, look, I'm in Australia. I'll see you collectibles, Star Wars collectibles from this country. If you go out and buy Star Wars food odd products, just the packaging from your country and send them back. And he had this massive trade thing going on and his collection was just totally devoted to that. And the thing that would spin you out, and it's like if you were to talk about it here, it would take hours to get through because he would have potato chip packets from Kazakhstan, Star Wars ones from Kazakhstan, you know, or cereal packets from Uzbekistan or places that you'd never even thought would have Star Wars in them. And it was a fantastic collection and one of the best collections I've ever seen because it was just so different and so unique. And he had it all fantastically displayed in a scrapbook. And every time he turned a page, he go, I was like, bloody hell, who would have thought that? You know, it was like a bubblegum packet from um, Zim Zimbabwe or something like that. And all these really obscure countries. And I'm not sure if he still has that collection. I hope he still does. I as I said, I haven't spoken to Phil for a very long time. But uh, in terms of Star Wars collecting, I don't know if it'd be worth a lot, but it just in sheer novelty value, it was absolutely priceless. So um, there you go. Very good stuff. There we go. Yes, there we go. Another great presentation. That's the problem, MPS. You've got this standard that you've set up now. We may have to just like defer the show over to you and uh and leave it at that so uh there you go um very good all right so uh anyway we're gonna buzz off we're, we're covered off a lot a lot of stuff tonight sorry for all the messages that we did miss but uh in the interim make sure you uh get out and about because you can now because it's uh you know the curfew's all gone and uh in the interim make sure you of course stay nerdy okay see you next time next week okay see ya